Heidi Ho there, friends and neighbors. Bobby here today with along with my son. He's going to be our cameraman today. Say hey to them. Hello. Hey guys, today we have a Husqvarna uh, 225L, an older uh, straight shaft weed eater that my dad uh, gave Nathaniel. And we are going to uh, try to get this thing back up and going. Um, <clears throat> we The other day we actually did get this thing going we um, took the carburetor off, cleaned out the bottom of the little screen, put some fresh gas in it. We actually got it running because it would not run at all when we first got it. But what we've done since then, uh, it, the air filter was like totally deteriorated. So we ordered a pack of five air filters. We went ahead and got a spark plug that matches the one that's in here. But we also bought this kit right here. Let's see if I can open this. Uh, that piece of tape is going to be my, uh, I should have my pocket knife here with me or something, guys. Let me see if I can just open this thing. I don't know. We're getting ready to rebuild it anyway. Anyway, we got a kit here that has a brand new carburetor, a spark plug, a piece of fuel line, and did I say filter? I did. Let's just go ahead and pull everything out right here. So here's our fuel line. We got a new fuel line here if we need it. We got a brand new carburetor. We have a little pumping bulb, but our carburetor doesn't have the pumping, pumping bulb feature. There's a new filter and a gasket and a new spark plug. It is, I don't know what brand that is. That's why I ordered the NGKs because I wanted to put the correct plug in it. I'm not so sure I trust this spark plug here. This kit here we got off of Amazon is only about $20. So it's definitely probably like a Chinese made carburetor. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and hope for the best here, get this thing back and going. And uh, stay tuned and we'll show you how to get it done. Okay, first of all, I'm going to pull off uh, the air filter here. It's just a thumb screw. And we'll go notice that there's absolutely no air filter in there, okay? But we're gonna need access to that in just a moment. Um, let's go ahead and take this upper cover here off. I think I had that off the other day. T25 Torx bit will fit this. So let's go ahead and just zip all these out right quick. And we'll get all four of these out and then we'll show you what to do next. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and uh, pull this cover up and lay it out of the way. It's just the four screws to hold it on in place. We'll lay it out of the way right quick. And now, let me turn this thing this way. Might be a better camera angle. Okay, let me turn this this way. I'm gonna shove this inside here. <clears throat> Might be a better angle to actually watch what I'm doing here. You can get down if you want to. I'm gonna pull the, uh, um, Go ahead and pull the carburetor off. We had it off the other day. So let's go ahead and same thing, the T25. You have two screws here that we're gonna back out. Now, I remember the other day, it was a little tricky. This uh, choke rod here is going to kind of fall out if you're not careful. Uh, so we're going to pull it off together here, this little cover. And see this little rod, this little choke rod, it actually just kind of fell out of place here. Let's just go ahead and let it fall. We'll figure out. I'll show you how to get it back together here in just a little bit. But there we go. So I'm holding it out of the way. Should be able to pull these straight on out now. Hopefully I can. Okay, and the fuel line here, let's see. What is it attached to? Must be holding this off a little bit. Okay, there we go. Okay guys, so there we go. This is a little choke rod I was telling you about. It just about falls out of place here when you pull it off of there. So going back together, you gotta make sure it's in this little uh, clip right there and then it runs in this little uh, tray right there the rod will have to run into there and hook up properly for it to work properly 
So just something to kind of keep an eye on <clears throat> as it comes apart and you'll know how it goes back together. So here's our uh, carburetor and the throttle linkage has already kind of, it's already um, fell off here, but it goes into that little hole right there as well. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the fuel line off of here. And then we're gonna look at replacing this um, fuel line first. Okay, folks, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this line all the way through here. I'm looking at this thing and I'm almost thinking that the line that we have here might be a little too big compared to this one. I'm not sure if we have the right size line or not. So here's the um, old fuel filter and the line, okay. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and dump this gas. So let me go find something to dump that into. And we're gonna go ahead and just get it on out of here too. I'm gonna put some uh, more fresh gas in when we fire it up. Okay, folks, hey, we actually took a little break. We ran up to a local uh, hardware store and maxed up uh, a different piece of fuel line with what come out of here. And I think we got the right stuff now. Oh, like, what in the world is that going by? Big old loud truck going by, folks. <laughs> this is what come in the kit. That's definitely way too big, okay? So what we're gonna do, let's go ahead and just measure this off about the length that it was. We got, a, we got a piece a little longer than we needed at the store. Let's go ahead and cut it off right there. I think this is plenty long enough. So this is, let's double check it one more time. Make sure I didn't cut it too short. No, we did, that's, that'd be just fine. Now, let me see if I can feed it in here. So we got one little hole here that we can feed this line through. Let's hopefully I can get it through here. Let me go get a pick and see if I can help it along, guys. Pause it right quick. Okay, guys, I went and grabbed a little pick here just to kind of help get it through here. So now I can get a hold of it with the uh, needle nose pliers and pull it right through. Now, in case I poked a hole in it on that end there, I'm just gonna cut off about an eighth of an inch, okay? <clears throat> just in case I did. Now, where's our new fuel filter? Right here, brand new guys, brand new fuel filter. We're gonna go ahead and uh, install him on here. Wow. I'm being kind of forcing it on there, but it should go. There we go, she's going. Keep working with it. Okay guys, I finally got it pushed up on there. Just had to work with it a little bit. I got it pushed up past the barb, so it should not uh, give a problem. So now let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull it on through about what I think I need for my fuel tank here. I think that should be enough right there. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the rest of it down inside here into the fuel tank. If we need to pull a little bit extra out of here, we will. And so there we go. So now fuel line is installed. So now we can move on to the next step. Okay guys, I'm trying to get this new carburetor and this bracket put together with the screws and get this choke bracket where it needs to go. See right here, I need to fit in between those two little deweys right here. I don't know if I can do this or not. There we go. Okay, so now we're in there. Got our two bolts lined up. But we have to get it to line in that track. You see that little track that that choke rod's on laying in there? So it's laying in there perfect right now. And now what I've done, this carburetor had a extra fuel hose. I think it's for like one of the little bowl pumps that come with the kit, but I'm not gonna, I, what I did is just block it off. I took a little piece of line and took a nail that fit in there perfect and cut the end off. off. We're just gonna block this hose here up and our fuel line will actually install right here on this side. 
as you can see on the old carburetor. So we'll, we'll run our fuel line up there here in just a moment and connect it as we put all this back together. Okay guys, I'm gonna put this new little gasket on here that come with this. Although I'm gonna leave this rubber gasket that's in place in place, okay? Cause it's just a thin little gasket. But evidently it's made to go right here. And I'm going to go ahead and put it on there. Hopefully it'll work. Now I'm going to hook this throttle cable up to that little hole right there as I put all this back together. Okay. So this is kind of the tricky, tricky little part here. Everything about this thing is kind of tricky. Okay. Now the screw is started where it's in the hole anyway. Get the other one in the other hole. And I'll try to hold all this in place while I start screwing it down. Thank you, Nathaniel. Nathaniel's uh, being a cameraman and handing me tools at the same time. And that's awesome, Nathaniel. Okay, so here we go. Hmm. See if we can get this thing a little further before I let go. There we go. Sure, we keep all this. I'm, I'm afraid I'll lose the choke rod. I'm gonna try to make sure we don't lose where it goes. And there's a simple way we can check that here in just a moment. Okay. Okay. Let's see if, we, let's see if the choke actually works now. Okay. okay, choke on and should be able to hit the throttle and it kick it off. And look at there, it did. Okay, so I guess we got everything hooked up correctly. Yep, we're on the key right there. Perfect. There we go. Hit the throttle and it releases. Okay, so we did that right. Carburetor's in place, guys. And I'm just going to put a little final torque on here. Not too crazy, just kind of snug it down. And that's about it, that right there. Okay, now, let me go get my plug tool and we're gonna we're change the spark plug right quick. Okay guys, I just took the my three quarter wrench. It didn't take very much effort at all. And I'm taking the old spark plug out of here. And as you can see, it looks like it's actually been burning pretty normal. It don't look that bad. About a normal wear. It's not really super wore out. But we ordered the exact NGK right here. And uh, I'm not going to worry about looking up the gap and everything. It looks like it's gapped pretty close here. We're going to go ahead and just throw it in there. But one thing I will do, guys, on every spark plug is take anti-seize, okay? Been doing this my whole automotive technician career. It don't take very much. Be very careful on a plug like this where you don't get too much on here and you end up getting it all over the electrode and then it ends up filing out. But all you need is just a little dab of anti-seize on those threads going into that aluminum. And that will keep it from seizing up to where the next guy can, and it might be you, can get the spark plug out of there with no problem. Now, a spark plug does not have to be crazy tight, okay? has to be tight, tight enough to where it don't vibrate loose and fall out. And it's the brand new crush ring, if you actually will just turn it till you feel that new crush ring start to crush a little bit. And that's about all you really need to do, okay? And you're good to go. So spark plug installed. Okay guys, we're gonna put a little gas in this thing and see if we can fire it up and get it running here in a little bit. All right, I think that's probably enough right there to test it. Let me put the lid on. I'm debating whether or not I want to. Uh... Why is that sticking right there? There we go. Okay. I'm debating whether or not I want to leave the cover off. I want to check one thing right here, guys. Let me turn this thing a little bit. I want to show you something. I learned this myself from watching a video 
sometimes the screen can get clogged up. And since we got the covers off, let's see if I can pull it out and clean it if it needs to be. Because these evidently can get clogged up with carbon. And looks like the whole muffler is going to come off on this one. Let's just pull this off and take a look right quick. And what I'm going to do is pull these screws out and take a look at this uh, screen wire mesh right here. And look at there, it is clogged up. See there? So guys, this thing has actually got some restriction from the exhaust here. So what I'm going to do is, uh, why would that be restricting though? I don't understand how that restricts. So pause it just a second. Okay, I see now, because here's where your exhaust comes out of the muffler, okay? Just that little tiny port there. And then it goes through that screen and see how it's, it's restricting it some. So we're gonna clean this screen right quick and brush all this off and put it back together. So stay tuned. Okay guys, I just ran the wire brush over that for a little bit. But right here is what I really wanna clean. And let's see if I can break some of this loose with a wire brush. And then we'll maybe do some choke cleaner and some compressed air. Let me see if I can break it loose with the wire with the wire brush first. Okay, folks, with just a wire brush, I got this thing cleaned out pretty good. Got one little spot right there I'm gonna work on just a little bit more. But uh, if I'd have had some carburetor cleaner, I probably could have soaked this thing and got it off of here a little easier. But we're gonna keep working with this in just a minute and throw all this back together. Okay, folks, I'm putting all this back together now. Let's just put this little flap on here. And now uh, I got my gasket right here. I wiped it off a little bit. Let me shove this in here into this little pathway. See if I got it where it needs to be. I think that should be about it right there. Okay. Okay. Now, put our gasket here. Put a screw here. There we go. Through the hole there. Through the hole here. Well, there we go. All right, now, let's go ahead and get this thing started. And hopefully this will actually help this thing out too. Cause an engine cannot run properly with a restricted exhaust, especially these little engines. They gotta have a lot of airflow evidently. A lot of airflow, man. All right, so let's get these. Tighten down. Okay, and we're almost ready to put the covers on. Okay guys, we're popping this cover back on. I decided to just go ahead and put it on. And uh, if we have to pull it back off for any reason, we will. Snug all this down, and then we'll put that new air filter on it and crank it up. Okay, guys, we're gonna put one of these brand new air filters in here that come that we got uh, in a pack of five off of Amazon. And then we'll put our little Wing that back on and we're gonna crank fire this sucker up here in just a second. Okay guys, we're gonna try to, uh, we're gonna put the stop switch, we're gonna put it in the on position. We're gonna go ahead and uh, put our choke on, give it a couple pulls and see what happens.
Okay guys, hey, uh, what we didn't show you was the fact that we first tried to crank it and it wouldn't crank, it's like it's starving for fuel. So I took the cover back off and then I noticed that I actually pinched my brand new fuel line. I actually pinched it. So be very careful if you do this job, don't do what I did and get it pinched underneath the um, plastic piece. Cause it put a, a, definitely crimped it in two and actually kind of cut it. But we had so much extra I cut that little bit off, reconnected it, put everything back together. Three or four pulls with the choke on. She fired right up and then took the choke off. She's idling great. It feels like it's taking the gas really good. So I think we got a winner here, guys. We're going to take it out back. Let me put my helmet on. Uh, Nathaniel's going to film me doing a little weed eating out back right quick. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> Alright guys, I give it I give the controls over to Nathaniel here. Okay guys, this about wraps up our video today on uh, putting a new carb and uh, tune up on the um, Husqvarna, what's it called again, 225? Uh, 225L. 225L uh, weed eater. Straight shaft. Straight shaft. This thing works amazing now guys. It works like brand new. We didn't have to do any uh, tweaking on the carburetor at all. You do have mixture screws that are adjustable and an idle screw, but that all seems to be preset perfect it seems to be running great what do you think yeah. yeah i can't wait to use it on our next job yeah. and that's coming up uh one day this week yeah so guys thank you for stopping by today don't forget to like comment subscribe we will see you next time we will leave links down below to all the parts that we used in this video today and i think total cost is about 30 bucks and you can get yours running like new again too have a wonderful day we'll see you next time